Hi, welcome all. Uh, welcome to the microbiology mediation session. So today we'll discuss about the Hymenolepis nana. So life cycle pathogenesis lab diagnosis of Hymenolepis nana. So it is the last topic in uh, cystodes. So under cystodes, we were discussed already about the parasite tinea, solium tinea, saginata, dipyrlobotrum, latum. So everything will be discussed. So here uh, today we will discuss about the Hymenolepis nana. So here introduction about the Hymenolepis nana. So Hymenolepis nana common name is a dwarf tapeworm. So here the smallest tapeworm in which infect the humans. So here it is the smallest in smallest tapeworm that is under cystodes family which infect humans. So what is meant by Hymenolepis nana, hymen membrane, lepis, which is covering it. So here, this is thin membrane which covering the egg. So hymenolepis, hymen membrane which is covering that is in the egg. Nana means small or dwarf. So small type form, dwarf type. Form. So hymenolepis nana, what is meant by hymen, hymen membrane, lepis covering nana, dwarf or small one. So here, which is a commonest in heart countries. So this is a brief information about the dwarf type form or uh, that is uh, Hymenolepis nana. So morphology, so always same as tenior right, that is adult worm and the egg. So here the adult worm has same features as like as tenia sodium and tenia saginata. So if you observe the adult worm has scolex, neck and strobula. So scolex has 4.5 centimeters length, 1 mm in, mm in diameter. The next has scolex neck strobula. So first scolex, scolex has globular in shape, four suckers. So here it is single row of booklets will be there. Next uh, suckers, that is a uh, four in number. So having the rostellum, the fractal rostellum will be there. So here the single row of booklets. So if you pick, if you observe the pictures, so four suckers will be there, single row of booklets. So here it is the anterior portion, the posterior to this collet, which is having the neck. So neck will be the long slender, which is a posterior to this collet. The next strobella. Strobella has a 200, has same immature mature gravid proglatids. So here it is having the 200 or more proglatids. So next, the adult form lifespan will be two weeks. So egg. So always the egg will be round oval form, spherical, ovoid. So here if it is observed, which is in the outer membrane. So, so this is outer membrane, inner membrane, in between the outer and inner membrane. So there will be yolk granules. So here it is a round oval having outer membrane, inner membrane. So in between the outer and inner membrane, yolk granules will be there. The next is having the polar thickening. So here the inner membrane which is on the polar thickening inside which is on the onchospheres. So this is the onchospheres. So here enclosing the extracanth embryo that is extracanth embryo that is named as onchospheres. So between the two already discussed uh, two membrane which is on the yolk granules or polar filaments. So next non bile stain floats in saturated salt solution. So that is about the egg. So here we will discuss the morphology that is adult worm and the egg. The next is life cycle. So life cycle, when you observe the life cycle, it completes its life cycle in only one host that is the man. So only one definite host that is the man. So there is no intermediate host or no other accidental hosts. So here the modes of transmission will be the so modes of transmission. So life cycle, the modes of transmission will be the that is uh, X contaminated X that is internal auto infection that is in children. So they are keeping their uh, fingers at the anal region or external auto infection. So here that is from the other sources. So here internal auto infection, external auto infection is the one source. The next is by ingestion of contaminated water and food. So the next, the other rodent will get the infection by eating of eggs, which is ingested by the rat. So the first thing we have to observe that the source of infection will be the 
that is the eggs which are present in the environment that is by internal auto infection and external auto infection so here this is the external and internal auto infection the next is by contaminated water or food so the person who has taken the contaminated water or food that is a infected eggs so after ingestion it enters into the intestine then if oncospheres are regulated the eggs will be hatched out then this oncospheres are hatches out so here which penetrates the intestinal wall and it will like so within four to five days uh, within the four to five days the cystisarcoid larva will be released the cystisarcoid larva further it develops into as adult worm so the adult worm has colex neck and strobel strobel has mature progulate that is 200 in number so gravid progulate they are releasing the eggs so these eggs are released in environment so these will get the infection through the contaminated or water or food or through the auto infection the same person will get the infection that is auto infection internal and external auto infection so the next another way is direct taking of direct they are the rats they will eat the eggs so they will get the infection so next thing is rat flea so rat flea ingest eggs of hemolepis nana so rat flea which ingest the eggs of hemolepis nana then the sister cell larva in rat flea so rat flea which is taking the eggs and contaminated eggs are will be there in the fish so rat flea which ingests the eggs of hemolepis nana then which develops into sister cell larva then which is taken by the rat ingests the infected insects so here the rat flea are taken by the rat so rat will get the so it is a cyclic process so next that is pathogenesis so there is any disease this is not produce any disease the symptoms will be that is allergic reaction so symptoms will be occur due to the allergic reaction then abdominal pain so here the area pruritus will be there so here it is commonest in children so this is the pathogenesis of h non so lab diagnosis so here it is the commonest thing a sample is the stool sample so here the first stool sample we have to take the wet wounds so we didn't find anything in direct microscopy you should go for concentration techniques so concentration techniques are salt flotation so next is formal ether concentration techniques salt flotation is the is method so here the eggs will be floated at the surface of the slide so here flotation method so salt flotation method this is the salt flotation method formal ether concentration techniques. so sediment will be formed so this is from the sediment will get the eggs and you have to observe under microscope so next is elisa method so elisa method also a recent advanced method for detection of the h nano so treatment will be the pragipinter niclosamide these are the alternative drugs so prophylax will be good personal hygiene so sanitary improvement avoid contaminated water or food so rodent controls so these are the prophylactic measures so thank you for uh, for watching my classes please do subscribe for the latest updates in microbiology thank you